the 2007 NBA Finals are upon us. We got the Milwaukee Bucks and the Golden State Warriors, a rematch of last year's Finals. Can you believe it? Can you believe this? This is what we end up with. I mean, we, get a, we, we, ended up, we had a crazy first round. Second round was kind of crazy. I mean, the Lakers lost. That's, that's always crazy when that happens. But uh, here we are, Bucks Warriors. Game one, Simcast. And the Bucks are dominating, beating the Warriors 122 100. So they're already up 1 0. I mean, I don't mind a rematch, but give us some good games. Give us some interesting games. Can we, can we at least get that? Uh, Jesus Christ, come on. Really? Warriors, 113 88's final score there. This is uh, not great. This is not great. But hopefully game three won't be as lopsided. Starting off... Mm, Bucks with the lead still. But this might be close enough to necessitate a jump. Let's jump. 91-83, we gotta do it. Otherwise, we have no video. Let's jump into this game. Game three in Oracle. Kevin Harlan, do your thing. Let's it go from deep. Cruise it from outside. The concentration from kid at the arc. A big part of how he stays consistent from there. Outside Hardaway. Once it's five from 18. No good on the shot, a bit long that time. Well, he's got to be disappointed in the result there. I mean, the defender really didn't make any impact at all. Russell, the rebound by the Bucks. Chandler's got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. Ginobili against Jameson. Good on the shot. Ginobili's got 15 points in just the second half. And you know, Ginobili is a three-level scorer. And it doesn't take much for him to catch fire. Outside kid. Out to the right wing. Here's McDice. He's guarded by Chen. And here's Kidd from the arc. Basket made. That gives him seven field goals and 13 tries. And that's right in his wheelhouse. Looking to make an impact when it counts. You know, they want the ball in his hands here because they trust him to hit all the big shots. Now here's Hardaway. Chandler with a screen for Hardaway. There's three pointers off the mark. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. Jim is in the best of hit. And a miss there on the triple. And so is Ginobili bringing it up now for the Bucks. Led by as many as 14 points. And Ginobili is just fierce. He isn't concerned about getting fouled on the way up. Howard's checked in for Antoine Jameson. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Bucks. The way they've overwhelmed the defense by drawing a ton of fouls. And more importantly than drawing the fouls, they've been converting at the free throw line. And another thing they've been doing all game long is knocking down the three. Shooting has been a big part of their game plan tonight. That free throw good from Ginobili. Boy, the energy Ginobili plays with is actually unbelievable. He's a whirling dervish out there who is always doing something borderline spectacular. Williams, he's checked in for the Bucks. And both free throws, good for Ginobili. And at the line, it's all about consistency with him. His routine, his stroke, it never wavers. Ginobili against Smith. Here's the pass to Russell. No good with the triple. Milwaukee leading by six. Dang with it. He's picked up by Kidd. By the way, no good. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the lead just enough to keep him out of rhythm. For Milwaukee, they've gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. Pass to Ginobili. And he drives in. The Warriors pull it in. McDice has got 11 rebounds in the game. 
Kidd against Hardaway. Kidd dishes to McDice. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. Fearless play by McDice. Taking his motion directly into the defender to get the foul. And the first one at the line is good. And night in and night out, you know, McDice provides a bunch of energy. He's an athletic big guy who does a little bit of everything for you. Those guys are hard to find, but always valued. And the Bucks making a change here. Doctors checked in. And it's been a really good day for him at the line. Some other bigs have well-documented problems on their free throws. He's not one of them. Ginobili looking around. Shot clock at five. Beyond the arc. McDice grabs the ball. McDice has got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. They grab their own miss. This will blow. His bucket is good. He'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. That one on Ginobili. Ginobili. Third personal foul. Marshall is checked in for Walker. At the line, your Warriors. Jawan Howard. At the line for one. What's up? And the free throw good from Howard. Fourth quarter of play, and over three and a half minutes have gone by. Hardaway against Kidd. Hardaway takes to Marshall. Passes it to Ginobili. Now, here's Marshall. He's covered by McKnight. Four on the clock. Here's Hardaway. And the Bucks miss again. And uh, 12 shots from beyond the arc tonight, hitting seven of them. Side kid has to hope. He dishes it to McDice. That's good. And so Howard with the assist. Howard's got his fifth assist in this one. And so it's Milwaukee now. They trail by one. Ginobili kicks to Marshall. Outside Hardaway. Chandler with a screen for Hardaway. Count it. Hardaway has got 26. And it's that in-between area, the, the mid-range. It's where Hardaway is probably most comfortable with his shot. McDice, good. McDice has got the lead up to one now for the Warriors. And you want him taking big shots for you in big moments. That one was as easy as it gets. Well, you don't want to give him any open shots at this stage. Never mind the layup. Come on now. And the Bucks with possession here. The Warriors making the shot. Here's Marshall. He found it by Howard. And it's the Warriors ball. They're on a 15 to 6 run. For three, Smith. Good on the triple. And now a four-point Warrior lead. An absolute sharpshooter. J.R. Smith always rises with confidence. Here's Hardaway. Warriors with the rebound. And the points coming for them now, Greg and Bunchen. And we're seeing what a high team offense should look like. Kid passes to Smith. And it goes on a bounce. That one is off Smith. And the Bucks <laughs> making a change here. Isles has checked in. Milwaukee trails by four. Outside Hardaway. The pass to Dent. Over Delph. And the Bucks miss again. 
And it's Smith with the ball. He brings it up for the Warrior. He's given up just eight points in the fourth quarter. Well, you've got to admire and appreciate the unselfishness. I mean, he is always looking up and looking out for his guys. I mean, excellent at finding the open man. Here's Jenobu. The Warriors taking the shot. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. I'll tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. Second yeah, two. if you're going to foul, then make sure that you don't give a Shooting chance for the end one. Manu Jinobu taking two shots. First free throw is good. And the Bucks making a change here. Foyles checked in. All three throws good from Genova. Warriors leading by four. Outside kid. Here's Howard, and Chandler sends it back. And how about the basketball IQ of Chandler? Just knows exactly when to sky and commit to blocking shots. Four years have gone. Seven to fifteen from the floor here in the fourth. Right around 46, 47 percent. And they'll get another chance. Big offensive board there. They can now milk a little more. Tang against Kidd. And the wide open shot from Ginobili. That one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. And this is how assertive Ginobili is. Outstanding with the catch and shoot. Smith dishes to McDice. And it's blocked out of bounds the Warriors able to retain possession here you gotta love strong defense especially when it comes in the form of harsh rejection wow and this is postseason play at its finest refusing to give up shots here in the playoffs and the Warriors making a change here Miles has checked in Possession here. The lead is two. Five to shoot. Kid passes to Howard. And he banks in the lane. And that's 21 points for Howard. And you just appreciate how unselfish Kid is. The outstanding at sharing the ball and playing for his teammates. Now here's Hardaway. Pass to Ginova. Takes the three. They get it again. Nice tip to hit there. I mean, he's got like a sixth sense in terms of where the miss is going to go. That is really a tap. Ginobili against Smith. Kicks to Miles. Outside kid. Now the dish to Howard. Good in the assist to kid. Howard's got nine points now in the quarter. Milwaukee trails by four. Side Hardaway passes to Foyle. Dang against Mike. They get it again. Chandler kicks to Genova. Smith against Hardaway. Dishes to Dang. Pass to Chandler. The box working the ball around. On the wing, Hardaway. Over Smith. And Hardaway gets it to go. Hardaway has got 10 points here in the second half. And that's a huge shot right there. Hardaway knows his team looks for him to come up in the clutch. Nick Dice passes to Kidd. Off target with his three. Milwaukee's gone 0-3 so far in the fourth quarter from long range. And the pass to Foyle. Right side, Dan. Now here's Janope. D right on him. Here's Foyle. No luck that time in the shot that would have put them on top. Smith outside. Launches a three. The rebound by Foyle. 
Foyle's got rebound number seven for him tonight. Pass to Chandler. Here's Foyle. It's Ginobili on the wing. They set the pick to tie it up. The Bucks need to get a shot off here. Foyle can't get it to go. He thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense did give up on that play and cut him off. Here's Kidd. It's good. The assist that time from Smith. Smith's got his third assist on the night. And this team turns to Kidd when they need a big bucket. But now you see why. Hardaway finds Ginobili. Goes up on the top of the key. Hardaway, no good. Warriors leading by four. Three-pointer, Kidd. Tyson Chandler grabs the board. Chandler's got 15 rebounds here tonight. Ginobili left side for three. And there's the call on Chandler. That's his third foul of the game. And Ginobili good for three. in the fourth quarter. Outside, Kidd. Smith outside. Shot clock at six. From outside the arc. Oh, effective! He's so clutch. When the pressure is at its highest, that's when he's at his very best. Milwaukee's gone into a thump from downtown in the fourth. Only one of their five three-pointers has found the bottom of the button. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. Always calm. He knows what's needed down the stretch. Just three. Ryan Russell is checked in for the Warriors. And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. And you really can't say enough about his composure in the big moments, as cool as they come. Here's Kidd. Feeds to Smith. Out to the wing. Nick Dice kicks to Kidd. Just five to shoot. The feed to Howard. That shot is off. The Bucks go the other way with it. Can't afford any wasted possessions down the stretch. Defense needs to be just as sharp, but it's not over yet. I mean, foul intentionally. They're going to have to do that now. Here and again, they're not in the penalty yet. Yeah, that's right. No other option but to foul and hope for some misses. Yeah, they have to extend the game. I mean, plain and simple. Use every second you can on the clock here. And now they decide to foul intentionally. 14 foul. the first one and that makes it a three-point lead normally kid is pretty consistent from the line but will that still be the case in the clutch and he hits both free throws here so now it's a four-point ball game two possession game now i mean those were really important foul shots now a timeout called by milwaukee they're trailing by four 17 well, all right, that was a pretty good game. Warriors win 114-110. They are not dead yet, folks. Manu with 35. How about Manu uh, in the loss? <laughs> Would have been better if the Bucks won and he had that many points. But still, Manu Ginobili had a big game, but it was in a loss. But 
Warriors win, so we're not going to get a sweep at least. Yay! Let's see if we can get another jump-worthy game. That would be so nice. Let's let's see if the Warriors can hang with the Bucks to summer round. Game four. Yes. Yes, they will. 83-80 is the score. Six minutes left. Let's jump in. Ginobili dishes to Dang. Back to Ginobili. Hardaway against Kidd. Nowitzki sets a screen for Hardaway. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. And the Bucks lead by five. Really imperative that you put a body on the Vitz. I mean, he's just too big and talented, close to the rim. Outside, kid. Down goes basket number six for him this game. He's taken 12 shots and made half of them. And that's right in his wheelhouse, looking to make an impact when it counts. You know, they want the ball in his hands here because they trust him to hit all the big shots. Our driver got a chance to check out that fantastic drive one more time. And a close game like this, you've got to dig deep and just find a way to make things happen. And the foul called on Antonio McDonald's. And that'll be his third foul so far. First two fouls. Dang, and he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Juan Jameson picks one up. That's the line for the Bucks. Dang, two shots. One falls for He's perfect from the line this time. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw. Kid passes to McDice. Howard trying to free himself up. McDice kicks to Kid. McDice a screen. Tries again. Milwaukee with the rebound. Chandler's Bucks leading by five. Ginobili outside. Passes it to Deck. Inside Hardaway. The three. Warriors with the rebound. Kidd's got his sixth rebound on the night. Here's Smith driving to the basket. Dirk Nowitzki with the rebound. Well, you will not see that from him very often, especially right at the rim. The wing Hardaway, covered by Smith. Novitski with the screen on Smith. Milwaukee, no good that time either. You, you almost have to assume he's going to knock those down when he is that open. Fade away. And the rebound goes to Novitski. Novitski's got rebound number eight now on the night. And Jason Kidd picks up the foul. Jason, that's his first foul. Nowitzki lifts up for McDice, and he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. And the Bucks lead by seven. Nice play by Nowitzki off the pick and roll right there. Was able to work through the coverage and open things up for himself and his team. Here's McDice. To the left wing for three. Kid. And no good. The Bucks go the other way with it. Bobbed up there for Chandler. Hammers the alley through. You know, the athletic game of Chandler helps tremendously. He's awesome at flying up to complete alley oops. 
they could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Here's Kidd. No good off the back of the rim. Tell you what, guys, you don't see that often. I mean, when he's this open, usually it's lights out. Dang, can't get it to go. Going into a funk from downtown. The fourth only one of their five three-pointers has found the bottom of the bucket. Smith finds Howard. Knocked away. Down low, here's Ginobili. Finish off the break. And now an 11-point Milwaukee lead. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The hustle. All right, that'll do it for game four. Bucks will win this one. Wow, it got close at the end, but yeah, 96-94. Final score. Bucks up 3-1. I mean, other than the last game, and this game was pretty close, but the Bucks are just too strong for the Warriors this season. I mean, the Warriors just can't quite punch back the way they were able to do it last season. I mean, the Bucks do have that experience. The finals experience. They've been here before. Dirk's been here before. The starting five, they've all been here before. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you can understand why they might be, uh, I don't know, more better. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. All right, let's move on to game five between this, these two teams. Could you imagine this in real life? Golden State Warriors, Milwaukee Bucks, you know, you got... Penny and Dirk, you got Jason Kidd. I just, I feel like, I don't know if you remember what it was like in 2007 in real life when the Spurs faced the Cavaliers in 2007. LeBron was in the finals, but the Spurs constantly winning the championship. I remember there being an issue about ratings in the finals. I wonder what the ratings would be like for these finals because I feel like they would be kind of low. But let's check out the elimination game potentially. Warriors, Bucks, Warriors currently up by two. Let's see if they can hold on and win, or are we going to get a celebration in Milwaukee for the championship? Trying to free himself up. Nowitzki, no good. Boy, he's got to be kicking himself for failing to make that shot. That's money. Smith, no good. For Milwaukee, they've gotten into a pretty good groove going 6 of 10 here in the final quarter. Here's Ginobili. That misses had a chance to tie it there. Well, you know, this is what happens. You can't afford to lose concentration even for a nanosecond. That's a two from Kidd, and the Warriors miss again. The Bucks shooting at a decent 34% clip here. Ginobili against Murphy. Ginobili the pass to Hardaway. Picks it out to Nowitzki to tie it up. No good on that one. And it's the Warriors taking it the other way. To the paint. And Antoine Jameson, the bucket on the assist by Smith. Smith's got six assists in the game. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Hardaway passes the deck. Ginobili looking around. Six on the shot clock. Chandler trying to free himself up. That one's in there. The Warrior lead is cut down now to just two on the basket from Ginova. And another great look at the 2K drum. And a close game like this, you've got to dig deep and just find a way to make things happen. Now here's Kidd. He dishes it to Jamison. For three, Smith. Chandler with the rebound. Chandler's got his 16th rebound on the night. To the inside. Dang. Can't connect from short range. And it's Smith with the ball. He brings it up for the Warriors. Over Ginobili. And it's Smith missing. Nothing seems to be going his way this quarter. To me, it appears he's starting to lose his composure a little bit. We'll see if he can regroup and get back into a better rhythm. So impressive with the fortitude, the will to battle back, but it did take a lot of energy to get here. Yeah, you know, battling back is about staying the course, and their attitude never changed. 
The Bucs have got a pretty good rhythm going offensively, shooting 8 of 15 for the quarter. Chandler with a screen for Hardaway. They get it back. Chandler, no good. A nice call from three-point land, 0-4 since the start of the final quarter. Smith, the pass to Murphy. He kicks it to Howard. Over Chandler. And Chandler sends it back. And how about the basketball IQ of Chandler? Just knows exactly when to sky and commit to blocking shots. Six. Looking to end its cold spell. A rebound by the Bucks. Nowitzki's got three rebounds in this game. Inside. And slammed in by Ginobili. And you've got to give them a lot of credit for just battling back into this game. Extremely impressive was the rally they made. I mean, we'll see how much their comeback might have taken out of them. And, and we'll see if they can keep that foot on the pedal now. And plenty of contact on the shot. So, two free throws coming up. The intelligence of kid coming into play on offense. He makes sure to draw the foul while shooting. At the line for two. And the first one drops. And when you think of elite floor generals, how could you not think of Jason Kidd? I mean, he makes everybody around him better all the time. Morris checked in for the Warriors. Both free throws good from Kidd. Making it look effortless. Send this guy to the strike. He's going to cash in more than not. Pass to Chandler. Nowitzki outside. It's Ginobili on the wing. Nowitzki with the screen on Smith. Ginobili. And Nowitzki, wide open. He fires off target from the wing. Wow, what a rough second half for him shooting the basketball. Maybe you adopt a, a pass first mentality at this point. They get the rebound. Here's Moore. Solid play on the low block, and that one's good. Moore's got his first bucket of the night. Excellent activity and timing on the offensive glass. That's how you get extra possessions. Here's Hardaway, and that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. Got a question for you. How do you guard Penny Hardaway? He's long, he's athletic, he's smart, he's got great vision, excellent ball handling skills. Simply a matchup nightmare. Shooting two. And he makes the first. And the Warriors making a change here. Miles has checked in. Hardaway hits them both. Here's Kidd. Over Hardaway. No good. Milwaukee's gone three or four from downtown here in the fourth. Bobbed up there for Chandler. Takes the alley -oop pass and dunks it down. You know, the athletic game of Chandler helps tremendously. He's awesome at flying up to complete alley oops. Kid attacking. Miles with a screen on Hardaway. That's a two from Kid off the left rim and up. Milwaukee in the lead. And ugly outside. On the wing, Hardaway. Dang against Jameson. Shot clock at six. And Nowitzki gets it to go down on the assist by Ginobili. Nowitzki's got the lead up to four now for the Bucks. One thirty 
pretty much to play here in the fourth. Not a bad look for him on that shot, but it just doesn't seem to be his night tonight. And Ginobili wide open. He shoots. And he's good on the three ball. Right back in this game. Stay the course. Back to you, Ben. Thank you, David. Howard trying to free himself up. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. Hardaway. And so he's picked up his final foul. And he will sit for the rest of this game. And guys, this is where their depth really comes into play. They, they've got such talent at that position. They'd love to have him out there, but they won't suffer much of a drop-off. This free throw is good, and that turns the lead to six. Both free throws. And good, aggressive basketball in that trip. Drawing the foul, converting the free throws, and then also narrowing the gap. Williams from outside. Warriors with the rebound. Definitely a situation you want to make sure you don't give him too good of a look. Jameson dishes to Howard. Dang, it's kid. Out to Smith. Here's the three. It's Mo Williams with the rebound. Well, another team cut moment here because he continues to miss shot after shot from three-point range. This is not a fourth quarter. He's going to want to remember. Milwaukee making a switch. Reeves is checked in. Here's Ginobili. It is now to Nowitzki. And stolen by Russia. Can't waste any time here. No, you need a quick bucket and then a quick pop. Pass to Howard. Chandler with the block. And so they choose to intentionally fight. First person. a seven-point game. Sent in an opportunity here to increase the lead and capitalize on it. Fires the three. Rebounded by the Bucks. Here's Reeves. is here and this place is going crazy the bench loves it the fans obviously overjoyed this is one of those moments these players will never forget now let's take you to the presentation of the larry o'brien trophy nba commissioner during the Congratulations to the whole organization and of course this incredible team. This Larry O'Brien trophy and I believe this suitcase are yours. So the Bucks have won back-to-back -back championships first time in this sim since the Bulls did it. They did it uh, twice actually. They, they, they won back-to-back 92-93 -back and then they won it again uh, four years in a row from 95 to 98. And we haven't had that since. 
And if, do you notice a warrior's guy clapping in the background right now? That's weird. Uh, a glitch, little little glitch there. But uh, yeah, I mean they did it. They they pulled it off. Dirk Nowitzki is now a two-time champion. Penny Hardaway. Who would have thought? You know, the, he, he, he was paired with Shaq. Shaq left him for L.A., for the Lakers. You know, Penny chased, kind of chased him out there. Wanted to compete directly with Shaq, so he joined, with the, joined the Clippers. Brought the Clippers to a finals in 2003. Um, but ultimately, decided to come back to Milwaukee. He had unfinished business here. He wanted to do what Shaq couldn't do. And that is win a championship in Milwaukee, the team that drafted them both. Well, now he's done it twice. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So good for him, good for Dirk, and good for this uh, stacked Milwaukee team who, I'll remind you, I've said it before, but all these guys were drafted. I mean, Penny was drafted, then left and came back. But Dirk was drafted by the Bucks, Manu as well, Luel Dang. You know, so Tyson Chandler. So they built their team through the draft. Had had one key trade, which was the Penny Hardaway trade, bringing him back. And then most of their bench pieces, other than the Donald Foyle, most of their bench pieces are guys they drafted as well. So they're a team that's really just focused on development and and, and drafting, and uh, it's really worked out for them. And they 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 have a they have a chance to really be dominant for a long time. Penny's getting old. But Dirk, Manu, Tyson Chandler, Luol Deng, these are pretty young guys. Luol Deng is only his, what, his second or third year. So there's Dirk's, here's the resumes of the champions. Dirk with a two-time champion, Penny as well. You got Tyson Chandler, who's also a two-time champion. In real life, of course, he won a championship with the Mavericks and Dirk uh, in 2011. And then Manu Ginobili, if we eventually... Yeah, there's there's Tyson, there's Manu Ginobili with, with with two championships. Well, Dang with two as well. Dono Foyle with three because he won with the Lakers. Khalid Reeves is a champion now. He uh, I think he was in Toronto last year. Smokey Walker, Robert Churchwell, Danielle Marshall, Mo Williams, Sean Williams, C.J. Miles, J.J. Redick, J.J. Redick who didn't see the court at all. I don't think this entire season is now an NBA champion. So good for him. He can uh, brag about that on his podcast at LeBron um, later in the sim, because that that'll be part that'll be part of the sim, uh, his podcast. And that's that's yeah, that's it. So that's the season. That season's over. Uh, what am I gonna look at here? What are we gonna look at? Uh, team history. Yeah. Okay. So Warriors, they have four championships. If you go to the Bucks, the Bucks. Now have three NBA championships, one with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 71. And then back-to-back -back championships these last two seasons. Last year they won 66 games, this year 68. Just just dominant. Moving on to the offseason, retired players. Roy Marble is finally retired. Retiring with the Rockets, who I believe drafted him. So that's nice. Dennis Scott. Dennis Scott was still in the league. Oh, my God. Got Gary Payton, he's retired. Billy Owens retiring with the Celtics to give me a Tombo. Larry Johnson. Both retiring on the Clippers, which is interesting. Dale Davis is finally done for his career. You see Larry Johnson's resume. Had a couple of all star appearances. Had a crazy Larry Johnson had that crazy two thousand and two season. That's what he'll be remembered for in this sim. Christian Leitner, Harold Miner, Alan Houston, Brian Russell, John Barry. Doug Christie, Matt Maloney, uh, who won a championship with the Hawks. Or no, the Lakers, that's right, in 04. Uh, but yeah, he's he's done. You know, I was excited when he was drafted by the, the Raptors, but he ended up having a kind of a ho-hum career. Uh, David Wesley's retired. Wesley Person. Um, Calvert Chaney. Frankie King. Kevin Ollie, Carlos Rogers. Sean L. Scott. Fred Hoiberg, Jimmy Watson, Oliver Miller, Jimmy King, Quanto Martin, Eric Williams, Gordon Gierczyk, Ruben Patterson. Yeah, didn't quite. That's not Michael Beasley right there. That's just so generic. But yeah, the sad about Gierczyk and Ruben Patterson. Just couldn't get them to develop in a, in, in, a, in a way that was meaningful. So 
but that's it. I mean, I don't think we got. I don't think we missed anybody down here. So uh, let's move on. Staff retirement. Someone cares about that. Gary Payton is in the Hall of Fame officially. Congratulations, the glove. You know, I had to make that happen. You know, he he had he should have gotten more All Star appearances in the '90s, and just didn't for whatever reason. And so, but I was able to make sure that he got at least six, which I feel like is like the barrier. You need six, and then if, if you have enough all all NBA appearances, I think that helps too. But he, he had the six All Star appearances and the all NBA appearances and 10 all defensive teams. I mean, he was a beast in this sim. He just didn't get a lot enough respect from all-star voters, which is a shame, but yep. He's a, he's a hall of famer. Got to give it up to him. And what's cool is if we uh, move on to the Jersey retirement, Larry Johnson and Gary Payton have gotten their Jersey retired with, the Mavericks and the Heat, respectively. So, interesting with Larry Johnson. He was drafted by the Magic, but made more of a mark with the Mavericks. You know, his tenure was, they had some playoff appearances, but kind of underwhelming for what for what was expected of, of him. He was paired with Grant Hill for a couple of seasons, and it just didn't really materialize into anything meaningful. But still, I guess the Mavericks felt like he had a meaningful enough tenure to, to retire his number. Meanwhile, Gary Payton... After 15 seasons or 14 seasons with the Heat, the Heat get their first jersey retirement. So they're the first of those four expansion teams, the Heat, the Hornets, the Timberwolves, the Magic, the first one of those to retire in numbers. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I'm sure Alonzo Mourning will be joining him whenever he eventually retires, which should be soon. So, But that is that. That's the jersey retirements. As you see, Larry Johnson will have his name and number and the rafters with Barkley, Dumars, and Aguirre. Social media is now a thing, apparently, as we enter the 2008 season. So give it up to social media. Meanwhile, <laughs> 76ers, Wizards. Wizards are getting a new logo uniform and floor. Sixers are just getting a new uniform. The Bobcats, new logo and uniform and floor. I changed their floor. You'll see that in the opening weekend episode, which is the next one. And the Hawks changed their local uniform, and I had to change their floor as well because 2K won't do it. Like, why not just do that too? Like, why, what, what is this? What is this nonsense? So, yeah, I, I changed those over the off season. I'm glad that we got a new Wizards uniform because – or new Wizards court because the old one was – I was kind of kind of sick of looking at it. So, nothing here. No league meetings. Uh they, they said no to all these things, as they should have, because stupid. Okay, draft lottery. This is where it, this is where things matter, right? Okay, so Grizzlies had just... Oh, never mind. I was going to say they just missed the playoffs. No, it was the Wolves who just missed the playoffs, and the Grizzlies had their pick. So that's why that happened. The Kings, meanwhile, get pick number 13. They had just barely missed the playoffs. We'll see who they can get with that pick. Meanwhile, number 12, pick number 12 is going to be kept by the Knicks. And that's their own pick. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. They, they also uh, had a pretty good season. They just barely missed the playoffs. Bobcats will keep the number 11 pick. Bobcats had a pretty strong season. Brandon Roy, they selected him last year. Got a nice starting five there in, in Charlotte. Meanwhile, the Wizards will hold on to the 10th pick. They made the playoffs in 06, but couldn't make it in 07. So, yeah, hopefully they could bounce back. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Hornets, let's see what they could do here. They're going to keep that number 9 pick. Will they ever be good? Come on, Hornets. They're wa they're wasting Dwayne Wade's young career and uh, getting sick of that. So the Hornets... Hopefully they could draft somebody who can help help things over there. Raptors with the eighth pick. I think this means that everything is uh, holding strong. Nothing, no big changes yet. No big surprises. So uh, let's move on. Let's move on to number number seven. Are the are the Grizzlies going to keep this pick? Yes, they will. The Grizzlies keep pick number seven. 
So once again, no big changes so far. The Clippers, meanwhile, will keep the six pick. So once again, everything is staying exactly the way the the original draft order uh, had it. Sonics, meanwhile, will not get the fifth pick. That'll go to the 76ers. They dropped down quite a bit, which is unfortunate for them. They had a really bad season, but the Sonics have moved up. Cavaliers, meanwhile, will move to the top three because the Spurs have dropped down to the number fourth pick. The Spurs had an awful season, and they get the fourth pick. That's got to sting for sure. Moving on to the top three, let's see. Uh, we're going to get the Pacers with the number three pick. Okay. And now here, here it is, the moment of truth. The moment of truth, Sonics, Cavaliers. We have one more year of the Sonics, and they go, and they go to Oklahoma City, and the Sonics will get the number two pick, which means the number one pick will go to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Can you believe it? Cleveland getting the first pick. Going to be very interesting what they do with it. You know, you get Kevin Durant out there, but you also have Greg Oden. Greg Oden, who in this sim could be pretty damn awesome because he's a, he he he. Everyone expected him to be great in in real life, and he just injuries were was what kept him from really succeeding. So, gonna be interesting to see what the Cavaliers decide to do because it might seem stupid not to pick Kevin Durant, but we really don't we really don't know what to expect from Greg Oden. So let's see. What the Cavaliers do with the first pick of the NBA draft, the Cavaliers will select Greg Oden. Wow, Greg Oden to the Cavaliers, which means Kevin Durant is going to the Sonics. Meanwhile, Al Horford to the Pacers, Mike Conley to the Spurs. It's a pretty fun result here, guys. Wilson Chandler to the Sixers. I feel like this is this was a very top-heavy draft, right? Ramon Sessions to the Clippers. Yeah, I think it was pretty top-heavy. Uh, Grizzlies get Marcus Saul. How about that? Marcus Saul going to Memphis. Brandon Wright going to the Raptors. Anybody else interesting? Who do we, who do we got left? AC Law to the Hornets. Hmm. 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 Okay. Wizards select Ronnie Stuckey. Not bad. That's not a bad pick. Nice rotational player, right? Bobcats, Jason Smith. Got no real thoughts on that. The Knicks select Jeff Green. Okay. I like that. Jeff Green to the Knicks. Kings. Marco Bellinelli. Okay. <laughs> that's, my, that's my reaction to everything. Grizzlies, Jared Dudley. So he's in, he's now in the league now. You got Joakim Noah to the Blazers, which is really interesting. You know the Blazers won the the finals in 05. Corey Brewer is going to the Magic, but about the Blazers, they they feel like they can kind of transition to a new era pretty smoothly. Um, uh, from the 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 Sharif Abdurrahim era to the Joakim Noah era. Thaddeus Young going to the Heat. That's not a, that's not a bad pickup. Not a bad pickup by them at all. Yi Jin Jin Lian Jin Lian ah I sound stupid. He goes to the Pistons. Anthony Tolliver to the Mavericks. I get, this actually is a pretty damn good draft. You could say it's top heavy, but there's still a lot of good role players, good rotational players, um, some starters late in this draft. Aaron Brooks to the Rockets. Mario West to the Bulls. Aaron Brooks, I remember him. Warriors. Tiago Splitter. I remember him being on the Spurs in real life. Clippers. Gary Neal out of Towson. Celtics select Al Thornton. Okay. Wizards, Morris Allman. Anybody else good? Anybody that uh, has slipped through the cracks? Julian Wright. So far, we're not seeing any crack slippage. Hawks select Bobby Brown out of Cal State Fullerton. 76ers select Gabe Pruitt out of USC. Bobcats, 
Gustavo Aon. The Suns? Okay, that's the first round. I don't know if I show you much of the second round, but let's see. Ivan Johnson to the Suns. The Pacers select. Jamison Curry. The Cavaliers are going to take Josh McRoberts. The Sonics, who already have the bi the biggest prize of the draft, Mirza Teletovic. I feel like I remember him. I remember the name Teletovic, that's for sure. Dominic McGuire. Yeah, you, I mean, the, the Sonics get Kevin Durant. They're going to go to the, the Oklahoma City uh, the following season. And uh, I'm excited because, listen, yeah, we're losing the Sonics. But I told, I, I've said it before in comment sections, and, and, and I said it before in the sim. Uh, we're going to bring the Sonics back. And maybe, just maybe, near the end of this sim, maybe Kevin Durant wants to come back to, San, to Seattle. I'm just saying. Uh, Javaris Crittenton, by the way, going to the Wizard, which is funny because... If I am not mistaken, he was the one who Gilbert Arenas, uh, there was something about guns, right, in the locker room or something like that. I'm pretty sure they were had they had a fight and yeah. Glenn Davis, big Davis, big, big baby Davis. Wow, I can't talk. Big baby Davis going to the Knicks, but yeah, it's kind of funny that Crittenton uh, ended up getting drafted by the Wizards because that's what led to Gilbert Arenas' downfall. That. That, that fight between those two. So pretty pretty funny. I'm pretty sure he doesn't even end up staying on the Wizards. I don't even think they sign him. So it, it, it ends up not really being much of anything, but still still funny. But uh, not really much else in this draft, but uh, I'll just... Oh, Joel, Joel Anthony. Joel Anthony, he was a starter. He was a starter in this league, and he was drafted at pick 50. So that's interesting. Let's see. Let me just... Let's just see if there's any other interesting ones. Aaron Gray out of Pittsburgh, center. Supersonic, Sean Williams. They had quite a few second round picks in this draft. You got the, the Jazz on the clock. Xavier Dowdle. Very nice. Golden State Warriors. Jared Jordan. Got a couple of picks for the Suns. Marcus Williams out of Arizona going to the Suns. Got uh, Spencer Hawes. Spencer Hawes, he's a guy. Going to the, the Celtics. And the Celtics also selected Rudy Fernandez. Interesting. The Hawks. Alondo Tucker. The Lakers. Yui Sun. And then the Bobcats will select Wendy Graterol. So that is it. That's the draft. Greg Oden to the Cavaliers. Kevin Durant to the Sonics. Al Horford to the Pacers is low key a very, a very good pick. They have Rajon Rondo there. They got Mecca Okafor, Michael Red. So the Pacers are are building a nice, potentially like a nice playoff caliber team for the 2010s. That's what it feels like is going on there for the Pacers. So we just got to be patient with them. Mike Conley to the Spurs is nice as well. Marcus Gasol to the Grizzlies. Maybe this is the beginning of a possible grit and grind era for the Grizzlies. Can we do that? Do we want to do that? We might want to do that. That might be fun. Might be a fun idea. Uh, but that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe. Should I give you a hint as to what happens during the off season? Should I give you a little? Maybe I'll end this episode with a couple of hints as to who's going where. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Talk to you soon.